Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, Diloma Neroni Sled, Excellencies, Honorable Guests, Colleagues from the UN, Friends, Young People, Ladies and Gentlemen, Ms. Ambula Vinaka, and Namaste to you all. Let me start by thanking the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat through you, Honorable uh, Secretary General, for allowing us to use this great space for this occasion. I welcome all you all uh, to this small and yet very important ceremony to mark the launching of the State of the World Children's Report for 2012. Each year for the past 30 years, UNICEF globally launches the State of the World uh, uh, Children's Reports the agency's flagship reports, whose primary aim is to raise the level of awareness and stimulate public discussion on the situation of children. Each report closely examines a key issue affecting children around the world. In 2012, uh, the focus is on children uh, living in an urban world. The publication highlights detailed statistics and information from around the globe about the challenges and opportunities facing children and young people that live in urban or urbanizing centers. In particular, it looks at the situation of children living in slums, shanty towns, or settlements. The global launch of the report is being done in Mexico City by the executive, uh, UNICEF executive director and leaders in Mexico. Our Pacific launch is being done here at the Falle of the Forum Secretariat. And I want to thank Honorable Secretary General Sled for agreeing to officiate uh, this chapter of the launch, despite his very busy schedule. Urbanization has been identified as one of the three mega trends that mark our modern society. While they no doubt have major positive returns, we must proactively engage these mega trends at each country and community level with risk management approaches that will enable us to keep the best of our humanity. The other two are globalization and information and communication technology. All these three have big advantages, but also they come with a lot of big risks for our populations. Ladies and gentlemen, while young people all over the world, include, in, including the Pacific, face similar challenges and opportunities, this year's report is special to the Pacific. For the second time in a row, the Pacific comes under the spotlight in this publication where issues distinct to children and youth in this sub-region are highlighted. You will recall that the special item in last year's focus on adolescents, which highlighted the intersection with climate change, and that was led by the President Anotetong of Kiribati. This year's report features an essay written by Honorable Secretary General Sled, who draws attention to the challenges and issues that are faced by children and youth in urban areas of the Pacific. He will shortly give you an overview of his contribution to the report and advice on how governments can deal with the rapid urbanization to ensure sustainable development. But allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to share with you some of the information and data that our office has found from recent publications and studies. To begin with, let me provide some highlights from three publications and the studies that UNICEF Pacific has supported, which show the evidence on disparities and vulnerabilities experienced by urban children and youth. Undertaken since 2009, Sentinel Silent Monitoring is an early warning system that monitors the impact of global food and financial crisis on the most disadvantaged children and families in certain areas of six Pacific Island countries. Data is collected annually from 18 communities across the Pacific, and it's analyzed jointly with government counterparts and used to formulate the country-specific country policies and recommendations. Also focusing on poverty 
and the most deprived families is the Vanuatu Child Poverty and Disparity Study. It looked in detail at how public policies and resources could more effectively reduce child deprivations. The evidence and insights gathered have been presented to key policymakers in Vanuatu and will be used to strengthen the profile of children at the national policy table. It draws attention to the children who have been left behind by MDG progress, why they have been left behind, and how public policies and resources could more effectively reduce child deprivations. This study will be launched in April of this year. However, the findings have already been included in the Global Child Poverty and Disparity Study Report. Launched in 2011, the study of the Pacific Youth Report, and those of you who are in Auckland on the sidelines of the Pacific Leaders Meeting may have witnessed this. It highlighted the specific concerns of young people. It sparked calls for higher level consideration of youth issues and it provided the, challenge, the evidence uh, for a new regional youth framework. The three publications provide useful information and data on disparities, particularly on children and young people living in settlements. To bring the issue closer to home, let me underscore some of these issues. In half of the Pacific Island countries, the majority of children will now grow up in a, a town, urban center, or urbanizing center. And in those countries that are still predominantly rural, the proportion of children in urban areas is swiftly growing. When children live in unplanned urban areas without access to basic services, they are robbed of the opportunity to reach their full potential, and societies are robbed of the economic benefits of having well-educated and healthy urban citizens. The urban atolls in Kiribati, Tuvalu, and Marshalls face particular challenges due to the limited land, water, and climate change implications. In South Tarawa, in Funafuti, or in Ebeye, overcrowding and inadequate sanitation are very real threats to children's development. While there are some gains of living in a city or an urban center, such, such as proximity to schools, clinics, and playgrounds, many children and youth do not share these advantages. Urban centers are settings for some of the greatest disparities for children in wealth, health, education, and opportunities. The safety nets available to rural youth are often eroded as they move to urban centers. The high cost of living in the Pacific urban centers and low wages that families earn mean that many urban families cannot afford basic necessities and services for their children. Sentinel monitoring in the most disadvantaged areas of the six Pacific Island countries has shown that the urban poor are more vulnerable to global economic crisis and rises in food prices. We have shown, especially when uh, remittances drop, that these are the families that suffer most. They cannot fall back on gardens or fishing to supplement their diets and incomes, which has a direct impact on the children's well-being. The immediate challenges of unplanned, uh, on unplanned urban settlements expose children to at least six dangers, including insufficient water and sanitation, growing hunger and malnutrition, high risk of road traffic injuries, inadequate shelter, mounting risks of respiratory infections, allergies, and heightened exposure to toxic waste, and risks of child labor and child trafficking. Ladies and gentlemen, this re report calls for urgent action to create a supportive environment that will encourage protection and respect for child rights. Children and young people should be at the heart of urban development and urban planning. With urban policies prioritizing the needs of the most disadvantaged children and increasing the provision of services for all, 
children and young people must be involved in finding solutions to urban challenges. This is vital to ensure that they have access to the basics, such as health services, playgrounds, and clean, clean water. Ladies and gentlemen, this report appeals to all partners to come together and invest in children. Partnerships at all levels are important in ensuring equitable development for all, including the urban poor, especially children and young people, as we need to build countries on that strong foundation. We need to work together to mobilize resources and support initiatives to address the human rights of marginalized and deprived children and young people. The message is very clear. Invest more in cities and urban centers, focusing greater attention on providing services to the children in greatest need. I really thank you for being here to witness this, because I think for us in the Pacific, it speaks a lot. Thank you for your attention.